Hey guys, long time no see. Nick here. Um, sorry I haven't posted in a while. I've been traveling a lot for the summer. I'm home from Missouri right now and my parents are hoarders, so there's really nowhere to film and I didn't really bring my audio equipment, so if it sounds bad, I'm sorry about that. I'm just trying to get content out there for you guys right now because I know it's in the middle of application season for you guys and a lot of people are stressed. And so I really just want to post content the next couple of weeks um, before I go to Michigan for my fiance's family and before I go to Europe to really get information out to you guys so you guys can be a little less stressed for your cycle. So in this video, I'm going to talk about interviewing and how to prep for interviews and how I specifically prepped. So I've gone over my timeline before of when I submitted primaries and secondaries. I started getting interviews around early August. And so right after I was done with secondaries is when I started prepping for interviewing. I wouldn't prep too early because this should be in your head and it should be sort of routine, but not necessarily like memorized. So what I mean by that is you wanna have the general layout of how you wanna answer a question, but you don't wanna have it memorized like you're looking at a card or it's basically just written down in your head word for word. You kinda of wanna be fluid instead of personality because you don't wanna come off as a robot in front of your interviewer. And so I suggest you start practice for interviews around end of July or whenever you finish secondaries. Secondaries is really the bottleneck for submitting stuff. You wanna submit early, which is around within a month or a month and a half. It's not a big rush. I know a lot of people got into good schools who submitted around mid-August or early August, so I wouldn't be too carried away with it. Just submit in an orderly fashion and you'll be all right. You want to start preparing for interviews around end of July, early August. How I started preparing for interviews was I talked to a lot of med students that I knew from my research experiences or just upperclassmen who matriculated later on, and they did mock interviews with me. I did a mock interview with a medical student at Johns Hopkins, who was on the admissions committee. He really grilled me and I didn't really take any offense to that. And I suggest you don't either. You'd rather have somebody in a no stakes scenario like this really point out all the faults in your interviewing so you can improve that for when there is stakes when you have your medical school interview. My second interview was with a student who went to NYU. He was in a club that I was in undergrad. And since NYU does an MMI, he kind of quizzed me over like the types of questions that they would ask there. And it got me accustomed to that format. The third mock interviewer I had was a student from Michigan who just gave me the general rundown and the questions that they might give there since Michigan had a hybrid. I met her in a underrepresented minority student group chat. So th these were the three mock interviews I had. I also went over just generic questions with a fiance, but I really want to suggest you do more than three. You don't want your responses to be too monotoned. There's different ways you can find mock interviewers. You can either find them through Reddit. There's hundreds of people who would be willing to go over their interviews with you. You go interviews with them. There's also med influencers. It's one of the good things. A lot of med influencers have had a lot of interviews and they've done a lot during the cycle. So they're really accustomed to the process and they can point out things that they did or that interviewer said or their reactions. It can help you out a lot for that. There's pre med office committees. Sometimes they officially have different for drop-in days we can do interviews. I know not all of you guys have schools where they have pre med offices, so if that's not available, don't fret. There's different group chats for applying applicants or medical students who are willing to help you out, or there's just residents who might help you out. This one might be a little harder, and residents are a little out of the game, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. There's a variety of questions you may be asked. There's a variety of formats. I know for Stanford, there was the traditional interview. There's also like a kind of an MMI format. It was like speed dating type thing where we were on the Zoom and an interview had one minute just to talk to me and get accustomed to me. Or there's the traditional where it's either two to three interviewers where you have 30 to 45 minutes just to talk to them and they can ask you whatever questions they want. It can go from very professional to very personal. I remember that I talked about my fiance and a couple of interviews and my interviewer just talked to me about our personal life. At first she felt a little invasive and she even said that herself, but after I kind of eased her worries, I think that really helped out in that interview because she saw that I was an open person. So it's not necessarily what you say, it was just how, how you say it. The fact that I was open to talk about my personal life and I reassured her when she felt that she was going into depth when she was asking about um, how long we dated, where we met, and like I guess our origin story made it feel more like a personal 
personal connection and I guess that made it seem like she really wanted to accept me after that. But there's also other professional type questions. A big one that's gonna happen is, tell me about this type of activity. I was asked about being an EMT, about my hobbies, about clubs I was in. I was asked about my research in almost every single interview and I had to be able to explain my research in a simplified and concise way. If you have published research, you wanna memorize your papers front to back because you don't want people to point out something and you're just sitting there like, uh, 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 it seems like that you didn't really contribute and you don't know what you're talking about if you are unable to provide that information. So I would just be accustomed to what you've done and just run over your application real quick because you don't want to stumble over things, especially in a interview setup where there's a lot on the line. The one question I would say starts off most interviews is tell me about yourself and why medicine? These are the two most fundamental questions and I suggest you really have um, a strong answer here that you practice many times. I had mine memorized and it really became routine after like the fourth or fifth interview. And I just went over, talked about how I was from Texas, my parents got divorced, blah, blah, blah. And I, it was, I, I got good enough to it to where I could segue into why medicine within a two to three minute range. You don't want your answers to be too long because you don't want your interview to lose track or to kind of interrupt you halfway through. So I suggest you keep your answers around 60 to 90 seconds. You can go a little over, it's not too problem. Just don't get too carried away and just keep it really concise. When it comes to MMIs, you're gonna get a lot of scenario-based questions, a lot more ethical, where they're saying, you are a medical student and you see a nurse or a doctor doing this that is unethical, what would you do? You really wanna do the appropriate way. It might not necessarily be the street way, but whatever is most professional at that moment. There's a guy from Washington University that says like the guidelines for ethics in medicine. I would just give that a quick look over so you're accustomed to what's a professional way to handle these type of situations. Lastly, for MMIs, there are sometimes team-based scenarios where there might be an impossible challenge you have to do, some type of puzzle, but it's not really testing your ability to complete said puzzle. It's more of testing your way to interact with your teammate. So just a forewarning, you always would be nice, even if it seems stressful, you're running out of time, just always hold up your um, whoever you're working with and just kind of lead them through the way. It's not always about winning or getting to the finish line. Your interviewer just wants to see how you interact as a team. And there's a lot of times how it works in the interviews. Uh, they see a lot of fantastic applicants and if you got the interview that means you already look good on paper so it's really just a, you see your vibe as a person so you really want that to stand out and to really watch your mannerisms and to be nice overall and kindness wins over a lot of people because a lot of people don't realize that pre-meds are some of the smartest people but sometimes the uh, neuroticism and just the gunner type nature gets the best of us some people have lost at the interview stage because of this and so just to be yourself be relaxed and be nice um, that concludes today's video. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. And I promise I'll start posting more often.